help us break it all down in terms of the Capitol insurrection hearing and what we can take away from it. It's political analyst Quentin Giles. Always a pleasure having you on, Quentin. Always a pleasure to be here, Tashani. So let's just jump right into it. What was the biggest takeaway for yeah. you from today's hearing? Yeah. Uh, the biggest takeaway was actually hearing from the officers themselves. We've seen these videos for, what, six months now. But to hear from the officers, particularly Officer Dunn, uh, the black man on the panel, talk about his experience being a black man in the uniform, uh, making those fire bomb analogies about arresting a hitman and those that hire the hitman, uh, not uh, backing down and stating that this is America. America is racist, but really taking that conversation and talking about it in its totality, even sprinkling in there that there is some good, but not shying away from the, the damaging, detrimental parts of America that black folks, brown folks, indigenous folks experience every day. Um, and so hearing that, that was one of the biggest takeaways for me. I think the second biggest takeaway was the real bipartisanship. Um, seeing Republican members on that committee, seeing Democratic members on that committee, they can't agree on much, but I, I am encouraged, as Officer Dunn said himself, at the fact that they have decided to put partisan politics aside as much as they can for the committee and really just be American happen. And Quentin, um, Representative Jamie Raskin of Maryland, who was on the panel, he asked Officer Dunn mm -hmm. about January 6th and asked him to compare it to any other protests that he has seen while working on the Hill. Um, and he discussed yeah. the Million Man March. He also discussed uh, you know, clan, clan men, clans members visiting the yeah. uh, Washington. But he also went on to say those events had the opportunity to turn deadly, but they didn't. And his statement mm -hmm. to that was, and he was squarely placing some mm -hmm. of the blame on, on some lawmakers, saying when people feel yeah. emboldened by people in power, they feel like they are right. That makes for a scary recipe for the future, <sighs> saying that's why it's important for this committee to get to the bottom of what happened. Can you briefly tell me how the testimony from that officer relates to current mm -hmm. race relations today? Yeah, one, he is absolutely correct that uh, there was a clear difference, right? We can we can take the Black Lives Matter, and I believe me and you have talked about this on this network before. We can take the Black Lives Matter movement and those protests and see how armed uh, Washington, D.C. was, see how ready and alert our president and then our attorney general at the time uh, was at that time and see the catastrophic failure, not only for the response when it was a predominantly white mob, as one of the other officers pointed out, that he really saw middle-aged white men, uh, we see the stark difference in how this insurrection, because it was not a protest, it, it was more than a riot, it was an insurrection. We see the responses to that. And he's absolutely correct in placing some of that blame at the feet of the lawmakers, uh, stating that they are basically obfuscating what's happening right now. Uh, Del Walter said earlier on, on this network, it's not surprising when you have new allies or white folks and just now learning about Tulsa uh, and that race massacre, because at that time, the people in power whitewashed it. So black folks all always knew, but now the world is finding out. And you can really kind of draw a line to this today. The only difference is black, brown, and indigenous folks are in positions of power. We have social media, we have networks like BNC to cover these things. And so we can all discuss the facts, but you cannot deny the stark difference in how these two events or other events have been treated versus this one. Yes, and Quentin, it's worth uh, bringing up our last guest in the last hour had an issue uh, with defining insurrection, which is a rise against yeah. government authority. And with that being said, it's also worth noting that <laughs> out of everyone that we saw on that day, everyone that participated, mm -hmm. only 500 or so people have been arrested, just one person yeah. charged so far, mm -hmm. one. This happened yeah. in January. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, happened yeah. in January and he's only, he's only <laughs> sentenced to eight months behind bars, a Florida man. Yeah. It's 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 crazy and it's very di pertaining to the the, the last uh, uh, guest that you had one of them. It's very disheartening and very hurtful to hear. Um, I, I would say uh, a misapplication, an intentional misapplication of what happened. Right? We all have eyes. We all saw what happened, um, and it is shameful that we had an attack on a co-equal branch of government. Two 
co-equal branches of government because Vice President uh, uh, Pence was there at the time. We had a full-blown attack on this democracy and only one person has been arrested when we saw flexicuffs for everybody black who was protesting the injustices of black folks. Um, so it's disheartening. I would even say it's disheartening that this committee is going on recess. I understand that Congress has scheduled breaks and I understand that they were already set to have a seven-week August break. But we have been, we, the American people, have been waiting on this commission to take place place. This is a, one would hope, a once in a lifetime event, and it has taken all of this time. So I actually don't even believe they need to go on break. You start at the commission, let's see it through, and you can have your vacation and your breaks any other time, but we need to know what happened. So are you basically saying, Clinton, the fact that Chairman Benny Thompson said, hey, we may come back from recess early. Mm -hmm to have a second mm -hmm. hearing. Are, are you not satisfied with that? You think they need to just work straight through the break? I'm not satisfied with that because this is the, the August break is not a surprise to them. It's a surprise to us, right? Because we're not in Congress. They knew when they would start this, right? Nancy Pelosi knew when she was going to call this committee. They they had the gesturing of a uh, 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 Senate uh, excuse me, House Minority Leader uh, Kevin McCarthy. They decided to start this hearing on this day, right? That was intentional. We thank them for that. But you chose to start today, and if you say that we may come back, that insinuates that you have the power to work through. There's choice in the matter. So again, I understand they are people. They need their vacation, as we all do, from our places of employment. But we have been waiting six to seven months to get this committee underway. I think that they can work through it so we can find out what's, what actually happened. And who financed it, who, who insinuated it, and all the things we need to know. And that's exactly what all of the officers involved who helped protect the Capitol that day, that's exactly what they want to know. Those who risked their lives yes. to protect the same lawmakers mm -hmm. who are now discrediting what they did to save their lives. Absolutely. Yeah. Quentin Giles, Shameful. always a pleasure. Always. You said it. Always. Always a pleasure. <laughs>